Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this rustic coat rack from reclaimed wood, some scrap metal, and a few hooks. So let's get started. We'll be starting out with a reclaimed 2x6, a piece of half inch by 36 inch cold rolled steel rod, some scrap plate, and some hooks I picked up at Tractor Supply Company. Let's talk about these hooks for a second. I picked these up at Tractor Supply. They were blue, so I sandblasted them. Then they had forged in China, so I used my grinder and ground off the in China. Once that was done, I spray painted them black, and then I lightly hit it with a piece of sandpaper just to bring back that metal in a few spots to give it a worn look. Then I went over it with clear, just a flat clear spray paint. I went through the process on the hooks over a year ago, so sorry I don't have any video on that. I started out the project by trimming the bad end off the reclaimed 2x6. Then I cut my two boards to length. I cut them 1 16th under 36 inches. And I'll explain that later when we use the 36 inch steel rod. I used my table saw to slightly trim and square up one edge of the shelf where it will meet the wall. Then I went through the same process on the one edge of the lower board where it will meet the shelf. Next I used a scrap piece of 8th inch flat bar I had lying around to help me scribe a line on that half inch steel rod. In trying to decide the spacing on my four hooks, I decided that the outermost hooks should be six inches from the end of the steel rod and then I would have eight inch spacing between the other hooks. I didn't want my hooks to be able to slide all over that steel rod. I wanted to have some movement but yet keep them mostly uniform. So I made another mark at three eighths of an inch on either side of the previous hook location I had marked on the steel rod. I picked up these Woodruff keys at the hardware store and my plan was to tack weld them onto the steel rod to hold the hooks in place yet still allow some movement. I had to sacrifice these vice grips by grinding on the jaw just so that it would clamp on a bit more secure. I replicated this process down the length of the steel rod by tack welding on the woodruff key, sliding on the hook, and then tack welding on the second woodruff key to lock that hook in place. Next I needed to work on these brackets that would hold everything together, so I just freehanded an arc that I thought looked good. Since I found some really nice black rounded head Phillips screws I want to use to hold these plates on the end of the coat rack, I need to mark out my location where I want to pre-drill holes. I then tack welded both plates together so that I had uniformity in the process of cutting out the arc as well as drilling the holes. My angle grinder paired with a cutting wheel was the only tool I had to cut this plate. I stayed proud of my marks with the idea I would use my belt sander to reach final dimension.
Now with the brackets in the shape I desired, I had to sand off those tack welds to separate the plates. Now you can see why I cut the 2x6s slightly shorter than 36 inches. It was just enough to hold the 36 inch steel rod in place while I tack welded it. Matte clear seems to be my go to paint for bare metal, so I gave the steel a couple of coats after wiping it down with acetone to get rid of all the grease and oil. Next, I gave the wood a couple of coats of clear semi-gloss polyurethane. It's really satisfying to see these old 2x6s get a coat of polyurethane. I wanted to make sure my mounting brackets lined up with wall studs, so I first found the center line of the 2x6. Then I measured 8 inches on either side of the center line to mark the location of my brackets. I picked up these keyhole fasteners at the hardware store with the idea I would use my router to recess them into the 2x6. First I marked the location where I needed to make a deep plunge cut with my router to allow room for a screw head behind the keyhole fastener bracket plate. I used this 2x4 as a guide to keep my routing line straight. Once I made my deeper plunge cut, I readjusted my router bit depth to match the thickness of the keyhole fastener plate. I made sure both brackets were equal distance from the top of the 2x6 before marking the location I needed to pre-drill for fasteners. I secured the end brackets utilizing the screw holes I had previously drilled when I welded the steel rod to the end brackets. Now I could finish pre-drilling the 2x6s and attaching the end brackets.
Thanks for watching.